progress. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Doctor, Doctor Gopal Krishna, I think we should start. Okay, okay, okay. Good morning to all of you. And uh, first of all, Honorable Principal Ma'am, uh, Dr. Nina Seth Pajni, uh, Dr. Anuradha Sekhdi, Assistant Professor, Institute for Development and Communication Research Center of Punjab University, Chandigarh, resource person of this webinar, Dr. Poonam Sharma, Principal Sentinel uh, International School, Samarala. Uh, she is also the organizing secretary of uh, this webinar. Dear fellow teachers from various schools, colleges, and from our own college. Today's webinar on advanced digital uh, innovations and artificial intelligence together achieve more in 21st century classrooms is being held in collaboration of IQAC and research cell of Gwindgad Public College, Alord Khanna, and Sentinel International School, Samrala. I really applaud the efforts of Principal Dr. Poonam Sharma ji, who has taken so much initiative for this webinar, uh, who is also the organizing secretary of this uh, webinar. Before I invite Dr. Poonam Sharma, the organizing secretary of this webinar, I would like to acquaint all of you with some of the USPs of our college. Gwindgad Public College is a PG college. It is a multi-faculty college. It is permanently affiliated to Punjab University, Chandigarh. This college is recognized by UGC under section 2F and 12B of the UGC. Our college is accredited by NAC Bengaluru. GPC is the eco-friendly <coughs> with solar power generation plant. We are having a centralized RO system. We are having a computerized library. GPC contributed 1,400 points towards Maka Trophy, which was recently received by our Honorable Principal, Dr. Nina Sethpaini, along with the Vice Chancellor of Punjab University from the President of India. One District, One Green Champion Award has been recently bestowed upon GPC by the Ministry of Education, Government of India. One more thing <laughs> I would like to say over here, if any of the queries uh, by the participants kindly send your queries in the chat box. Now I formally invite uh, Dr. Poonam Sharma ji, principal, uh, to take on the further proceedings. Thank you. Good morning all and uh, Dr. Anuradha, nice to see you virtually. Nina Seth Pajni here. Welcome to all the participants. Over to you, Dr. Poonam Sharma ji. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Poonam Sharma here, Principal Sentinel Good morning. International School, Sangrala. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. I feel privileged to introduce Dr. Anuradha Sekri. Dr. Anuradha Sekri, she is working as an assistant professor in Institute for Development and Communications Research Center of Punjab University, Chandigarh. She holds a PhD in education and master's in education and chemistry. She has 12 years of experience in teaching and research. She actively participate in teaching research for PhD, research scholar and completing research projects. She has published more than 37 research papers in international and national journals, conference proceedings, book chapters, and presented papers more than 30. And she has taught BA, MA education, and MA students, and also in the Department of Education, Punjab University, Chandigarh. Her areas of interest include educational technology, inclusive education, science education, teacher education and higher education on which she contributed writing book chapters and attending workshops to update latest knowledge on teaching pedagogy. She has also published one book, computer-based 
cooperative learning strategies in chemistry classroom. Effect of computer-based individualistic and cooperative learning strategies on achievement and retention in chemistry. She has successfully organized workshops on online teaching and learning for training of teachers through online mode. She has delivered lectures as a resource person in national and international workshop. She has also contributed a position paper to the state curriculum framework. SCRT Punjab for revision of curriculum in view of NEP 2020. Recently, she has received the Global Teacher Award 2021 given by AKS Educational Society. She is nominated as resource person by SCERT Chandigarh in the focus group of state curriculum framework in the area of educational technology, science education and teacher education. She has also worked as a senior research fellow in the Department of Education, Punjab University, Chandigarh. And she has received awards as a junior research fellowship, senior research fellowship, and that is from UGC New Delhi. She has published many projects in the area. Few of them I am going to introduce. Evaluation of Inclusive Education in State of Punjab, sponsored by SCRT Punjab, completed in year 2016-17. Impact of Privatization on Quality and Efficiency of Higher Education. A comparative study of primary quality education with reference to learning outcomes in government and private schools. That is also sponsored by the Department of Planning, Government of Punjab in the year of 2019 and 20. From surface to air, a quantum leap of the teacher teaching online during COVID-19. And her ongoing projects, research projects are evaluation of Betty Bachao, Betty Padhao scheme in the state of Punjab, sponsored by Department of Planning, Government of Punjab. And today again, ma'am is here with us to deliver a webinar on advanced digital innovations and artificial intelligence. As we all know, since 2020, we people are engaged, all the teachers, professors are engaged with the online teaching system. And we have suffered a lot. We have faced many a problem because we are not computer literate, right? So, Ma'am is the one who is going to teach us many a things today as taken as she has uh, taken this charge to a quantum leap of the teachers teach, uh, teaching online during COVID-19. So that is from uh, surface to air. So today again, ma'am is going to tell many a things take about this artificial intelligence to us. And uh, now even I request Dr. Anuradha Sekri Dr. Nurada, uh, I request you, you please take a teach in such a way so that whatever we are facing the problem as our teachers, they are facing a problem while taking the online classes. Now the number of apps are there. That, that is also the part of intelligence where we people are connected with one another as today one webinar is also there. So through this webinar, we are going to learn and receive many things from you today. So kindly, please go ahead, ma'am. Thanks a lot. And thanks, everyone. Thank Dr. you so Nuhada much. Fikri. Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Over to you, please. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for your kind words and such a long, detailed, elaborate introduction. Maybe that was not needed, but uh, thank I'm you, really thank thankful you. to you. That uh, is needed, ma'am. That is needed. Thank you, ma'am. On the very outset, I would like to thank both the organizers, Dr. Meena ma'am, Dr. Poonam ma'am, and of course, uh, management of this college, Gobindgarh Public College, uh, for organizing such events. And also I'm very thankful for providing the opportunity to share my views uh, with all the teachers uh, from uh, this uh, Punjab and across the states, maybe they have joined us. Uh, so uh, just, I would like to share my screen first.
hope my screen is visible. Uh, yes, ma'am, it is. Visible. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for confirming me. Uh, and uh, on the very outset, I just want to start my lecture. And today is my topic is this advanced digital innovations and artificial intelligence together we can achieve more uh, in 21st century classrooms uh, one thing i want to discuss with you people today is how innovations have changed today's classrooms our culture our working life i mean it's it's all about not only about this pandemic has how affected us but there are so much factors that actually interplay and also change our total, uh, I mean, it's a renovation of our classrooms actually, teaching, whole teaching learning process has been shifted over the night. And of course, we will be discussing more of the tools, uh, more of the applications of this artificial intelligence uh, that is a complete overhaul of this uh, new uh, classrooms that we are in the 21st century. Uh, just uh, I'm moving further. The overview of my presentation. What are the key takeaways? So basically, I will be discussing with you the emerging trends. What is going in this sort of the present scenario, uh, and of course, what is uh, the concept of this artificial intelligence is, and of course, the future of AI in the classrooms, and of course, relating to this augmented reality, some tools I will be discussing and what the augmented reality AR actually is. And of course, I will be discussing virtual reality, what VR is, and what are the applications of artificial intelligence in our daily life, in the real world, in teaching process, in education, and what are basically the challenges uh, and opportunities we come across and uh, how we can tackle all these kinds of problems. So moving further, uh, what are the basically advanced digital innovations, uh, which I, I will be going to talk about in this uh, webinar is, uh, I mean, there are so many digital innovations. There is no end if we talk about this uh, word innovation, uh, especially uh, this present scenario. Uh, but uh, now today I will be discussing with you uh, this uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, design thinking, and of course, experiential learning. Because according to my knowledge, uh, what uh, we are perceiving, I mean, uh, through this webinars, through, I mean, uh, uh, through communication with the colleagues and uh, along with other faculty members from various institutions, what, we, uh, what the problem we address today is how to apply the innovations, how to acquire the knowledge and then apply and then implement and to bring and improve learning outcomes. I think this is the major problem we are coming across because uh, we are just entering in, into this segment. Initially, uh, from last two years, day by day, we are improving. Uh, but of course, it will, it will take time. Uh, this is a very slow process, moving from a technological innovations to pedagogical innovations. And this is actually the journey. And this journey, in this journey, we have to learn so many things. Uh, moving further, now, uh, when we talk about digital innovations in education, what concept that comes into our mind is that why we should innovate? I mean, is there any necessary, is there any need, or we are, we are just doing fine, uh, as I have written on my slide. Uh, you just kindly put it in the chat box, because uh, I, I want to make the session more interactive. I don't want one-sided traffic only. So just you kindly put it in the chat box, yes or no. Do you want to innovate? I mean, or we are doing just fine. I mean, it's not a compulsion to uh, always apply the innovations to I mean, uh, gain the knowledge. I mean, it's up to you if you, and you should be in that state to select the innovations. I will come into these in my uh, further slides. I mean, which innovations are needed, which are not needed. Uh, so just kindly put it, Yes, thank you very much. I mean, this, this is the only way because we have to make it more interactive. This is also one element of our teaching. You have to interact your with students. Um, side by side, I will be giving some tips also. Uh, not, uh, this is this tips you can apply not only in your uh, online teaching, digital teaching, but also classroom teaching also. How to make in teaching and learning more interesting. I mean, how to create the interest, how to arouse the curiosity in the students how to make it more enthusiastic. I mean, and how to put and more energy in the classrooms. 
uh, side by side, we are doing these things. These are the little big things. And I want to feel your presence. That is why I'm, I will be just chit chat with you, just interact with you, wants to know your opinion, know your responses. Uh, so moving further, I mean, the next question is, if you all agree that we need innovations, then the question is how, where, what? Where are these innovations? I hope my medium is fine with you. Uh, if, if you need uh, to switch my medium, then uh, I can also take it bilingual. You can put it in chat box also if it is fine, because sometimes uh, this is uh, depend upon the I mean, participants. If they, if they are, I mean, uh, they can easily understand that it's okay. We will move further. My next slide. Uh, the question is that creativity and innovation. What is the meaning of creativity? Something new, something novel, something original. We are, uh, when it comes to, I think, difference between creativity and innovation, creativity is thinking of the new things. I mean, you just apply your thought process. What should be the, uh, what should, what should new I can do today? I mean, uh, just, just for example, I'm taking example that uh, in, in our daily uh, I mean, routine, uh, we are doing so many activities and we always think that which activity we should plan further, which is uh, some new, you know, why is some, no, no, some thing original? I mean, different from our daily routines. So innovation is doing those things. This is the major, I mean, uh, difference between both. And this is very important to know the meaning, to understand the meaning. Creativity is thinking of the new things and innovation is doing the new things. I mean, when you have some ideas, you just execute it, you just implement it. And the last is what is the output basically. So this is what the innovation is and now, uh, moving further, I was talking about that we don't know what in which innovations are needed and which are not needed. This is, this is I think this is the basically, I mean, this is the major irony, what I can say that today we have a lot of tangible innovations, but there are very, very few, very less intangible innovations. Because uh, what are the tangible innovations? First of all, I want to discuss that is tools, technology. I mean, the, the, the digital part, the materialistic part, I mean, the business part, the industry part. Uh, when I, I will be focusing, uh, my focus will be on classrooms because we are uh, more concerned with education process. So in this here, what are the tangible innovations regarding the technology, regarding the digital techniques, I mean, regarding various uh, the the coming uh, technological innovations which we are uh, uh, we are day to day we are facing nowadays we are using nowadays so what are intangible innovations these are a sound pedagogy a sound integration of technology with pedagogy what are the strategies what are the techniques we know how to use these innovations apply in classrooms I mean. Uh, I have just underlined this pedagogical innovations because this is much needed and this is missing. The problem is that we have tangible innovations, but we have very few, uh, or I can say this is a slow process that is emerging uh, from uh, technological innovations when we are moving towards pedagogical uh, innovations. But this, this, is, this process is very, very small, uh, very slow process, but of course it will emerge and we are day by day, we are moving towards this uh, rise of this pedagogical innovations. Actually, we need those kinds of innovations in which we have a sound pedagogical theory inbuilt in those innovations. And nowadays, what we are doing that throwing the technology into the classrooms, throwing the computer, throwing the digital tools into the online classes is not innovation. That is why we are not, uh, I mean, successful in bringing, in achieving the improved learning outcomes, why the quality is low, why the students are not motivated to attend the classes. This, this is the major, major issue that we need to integrate this technology with pedagogy. I mean, this, this is the, another uh, issue uh, which is reported. Uh, now the question arises, uh, what works, what does not work and how to go by it. And how to go by it, we are here. Uh, we will learn new things, we will use this. Uh, because in 21st century classrooms, when we are talking about how to create the culture of innovations, how to build the momentum uh, to support these classrooms, we have to rethink our goals. We have to think 
new strategies, right? Right. We have to support the educators, and this can only be done by planning. This can only be done by efforts. We have to put a lot of efforts to frame our objectives, to select the strategies, and to support the teachers, basically the educators, because they they need our support. And of course, when it comes that uh, why should we you know wait because the the reality is that there is there is a so much competition nowadays. I mean, uh, to differentiate to survive in the new markets. I mean, in, because you you people all agree that the totally the jobs are now going to change. The future trends which are emerging is that now totally there is an overhaul. I mean, the needs of industry, the jobs, the present careers, the choices, all everything is going to change. The the, the skills we, uh, you have been trained with, especially the, I'm, when I am talking to teachers, and of course if there are students. That there, there is always there is a complete I mean a shift uh, the 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 training you have got in your skills that uh, that will not able to survive you in the future jobs I mean even if you want to uh, now uh, update yourself up you have to update your skills we we required a lot of training for that and that this is much needed you people all agree with me in this one one fact that in the in the coming times in the future times. We need a lot of training, a lot of new knowledge, a lot of technology. We have to learn. I mean, a lot to survive in our fields. So this is KPMG Google report, and uh, it was highlighted. I mean, it was clearly highlighted that we need to when we need to uh, survive to get employable in the job markets, we have to reskill. We have even for the entrepreneurship. I mean, it growth sets. We we have to continuously reskill in order to survive. And I think this this the now uh, this this is the truth we all have confronted because of this pandemic. New changes we are confronting day by day, and we are realizing there is a need to upskill to reskill. Uh, this is this is very important. Uh, and this is uh, I, uh, this is the uh, new I mean concept given by this. Uh, uh, OECD and also World, World Economic Forum that we need to upskill and reskill and this is the future for India's global workforce. Uh, the upskilling is uh, that you have to add the new skills. I mean, uh, the, for example, you have to learn the digital tools. I mean, from last two years, you learn how to take the online classes, how to develop e-content videos. I mean, the lot many things you learn. You you have to add new skills. And when it comes to reskill, reskill means whatever you have already trained, you have already learned. You have to polish that. You have to gain the new knowledge to survive in this. I mean, job markets in your profession. Actually, basically, uh, what we are doing, we are moving from soft skills to professional skills. Actually, now the time has changed that only soft skills will not help. We, uh, but uh, somewhere uh, in this, uh, I mean, present scenario, there there are so many, I mean, institutions or places or the countries where even the people do not learn the soft skills also. But the, but the day by day improvements, if we are moving even to now, the trend is this is a very good model given by this uh, Professor Walter, uh, growth and work industry neutral growth skills. I mean, this kind of skills are now needed in the job market. And I will show what are these the neutral growth skills are, because this these all things are linked to the innovation. Uh, and I thought I must share this. These are the new trends. These are the present scenario, which is going to be the future. Actually, these are the some. These are the five skills uh, which is uh, I mean highlighted. Uh, this is creativity, critical thinking, self-management, social intelligence, and attention management. These, these are the four, five skills. Now we are moving from soft skills to professional skills. And of course, we need some growth skills. Growth mindsets is much, much needed. Uh, now, just let me know one answer from you, an honest answer from you. Please kindly put it in the chat box. Are we really innovating or we are just digitizing the traditional teacher. Just be quick participants. Are we really innovating? We are you are you are taking online classes? 
right? You are, uh, you are, I mean, uh, learning new tools, new digital tools, writing uh, e-content and everything you are doing. I mean, because of this pandemic, we have just shifted to online teaching, blended learning, flipped classrooms. Do you think we are really innovating? Is there any innovation or we are just throwing the technology on, in, uh, I mean, into the uh, classrooms or we are just digitizing this traditional teaching? We are still using the uh, 19th century uh, lecture methods or a traditional methods in the 21st century classrooms. I mean, if you agree with me, just put it yes or no, that we are still, uh, I mean, uh, just uh, using the traditional I mean, strategies uh, in online classrooms. That is why uh, it is not working actually. I mean, according to my knowledge, I mean, what we are reading in uh, uh, journals, in magazines, in articles, in newspapers, that why this, uh, there is a lack of quality I mean, why we are not, uh, I mean, the, the, the energy we are putting in the online classrooms, it is not reflecting the output, actually. So, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Gurpreet ji. Thank you, Urvashi ji. Uh, I mean, this, this, is, this is a present scenario, and we have to improve this. And uh, for improving this, we need some uh, kind of tools. And of course, uh, the question is that we have to make our students a good thinkers. This is missing in the classrooms, even in the physical classrooms also. This is not about mm -hmm. the digital. Even in before this uh, COVID and pandemic, even this 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 was happening. Uh, so we have to train our students to become thinkers, to make them think actually. And for thinking, I think we have to build these core skills of critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, innovation. And for every skill, every skill, there are so many digital tools. There are so many teaching learning strategies because being an, uh, teacher educators, uh, we, we actually train uh, so many models, uh, so many theories. We can integrate these with the digital tools and we can improve the learning outcomes. There are so many examples I can share, but we, we, uh, this is not the platform. Right now we are concerned about other things also. Uh, so uh, moving further, uh, this is actually when I, I was talking with you uh, this is artificial intelligence. And when it comes, there are the two words, artificial and intelligence. And you all know what the intelligence is, basically. Intelligence is your ability, I mean, to acquire and apply the knowledge, to carry out the abstract thinking, to th act purposefully, to think rationally, to deal effectively with the environment, to adjust, to adapt with the environment. This is basically what the intelligence is. Now, what when it comes to artificial intelligence what the artificial intelligence is because uh, the definition the concept it should be very much clear to you before i move to the further the tools the application part artificial intelligence is basically concerned with the designing of intelligence in the artificial device this is basically what the uh, artificial intelligence is I mean, uh, this term was given by uh, the, the, I mean, the father, which is considered as the uh, of artificial intelligence, McCarthy, 1956. Basically, the work began with the Alan Turing. Uh, uh, then the McCarthy has uh, worked at Stanford and MIT and has this. Uh, it was basically started this artificial intelligence work uh, in both the labs at MIT and at Stanford. And there were the two ideas in this artificial intelligence. One is intelligence and other was artificial device. Uh, basically, a system with the intelligence is expected to behave as intelligently as human. We are, we are programming the artificial machine to behave in a human manner. This is basically artificial intelligence is. We are, I mean, I'm training this computer, this laptop to behave as human, to think to behave intelligently, to do all the tasks. A machine, I'm training this machine to do intelligently all the work so that I can, uh, uh, I can improve my efficiency. I can take the help of this machine. This is what artificial intelligence is. Basically, there are two ideas and uh, the, the, the artificial intelligence is all about designing the system which are intelligent as humans a system with intelligence is expected to behave in the best possible manner. So this this is uh, this is the meaning of uh, I mean artificial intelligence. 
And as I have already told this, science and engineering of making the intelligent machines. Okay. So when today, when we emphasize the machine uh, that uh, can learn, at least like the human beings, we are learning. We are learning the new technology. The machines can even learn. They can think. They can mind. They can train. I mean, this is what the artificial intelligence is. I mean, it's the capability of machine to imitate the human behavior. We can build such systems that exactly do the work as humans do. Uh, and I think this is this is the uh, this is the future. Uh, this is the uh, I mean, this was started actually from 1956. It's so not a new concept. Artificial intelligence is not a new concept. But the thing is that, but now from uh, I mean, from last decade, and of course from this pandemic after this, this uh, this this is I mean, going to bring a lot of I mean improvements in the global industry at everywhere. Uh, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Apple, every I mean a big company I mean a big firm is is using looking for uh, new research in the artificial intelligence using this artificial intelligence. I mean, uh, Amazon even, well, there are a lot of, uh, I mean, examples are there. They are looking for the new research and, and they are improving, uh, the, uh, using the artificial intelligence and they're improving uh, their efficiency, uh, customer satisfaction. Uh, day by day, they are bringing new features actually. I mean, it's a flood in the market. We, we, we can all agree and we all experience. Actually, the thing is that we are all using AI, knowingly or unknowingly, uh, we we all are experiencing this uh, use of artificial intelligence. The thing is that artificial intelligence, uh, because uh, some of us or maybe uh, you all are aware of this, uh, I mean, uh, concept, but uh, because we don't have any much exposure, so uh, we, we, we do not know, I mean, how to uh, bring this concept in the classrooms, in the teaching. And of course, we are learning uh, this concept. Uh, so, uh, moving further, uh, how, why is artificial intelligence emerges? I mean, uh, uh, why people are using this technology? Why it came into the field? Because uh, there was a lot of data. Data is the new oil, actually, I must say. There's a big volumes of data and how to handle this data. I mean, how to uh, use this data and uh, bring uh, and improve the out output. This this was the major I mean issue. That's why we are taking the help of artificial intelligence, and that's called the big data. I mean uh, structured data, a lot of unstructured data. So this is why uh, we are using artificial intelligence. It it was artificial intelligence in context to computer networks. It can be defined as the computer devices which can understand raw data. Basically, we are providing them past data raw data and it, uh, when you provide them it takes your information from your data and use those findings to uh, uh, to arrive at the final results the final conclusion part because you know that uh, you all in your smartphones i mean we are using various applications amazon netflix all the all these uh, big large companies they are they are using uh, this kind these kinds of uh, i mean platforms these they are using this artificial intelligence they are what they are doing what they are doing they are just they are just taking our data they are uh, taking our information this is what they are doing actually they uh, they are saving our data and and they process those data facebook lot of whatsapp i mean all companies they are using we are just providing data who is providing the data we are providing the data they are just processing it and on the basis of uh, the processing they are giving us recommendations suggestions you can all uh, you can uh, i mean recall also uh, for example in the, when uh, you just uh, go for online shopping i'm just giving the example so that the concept is more clear to you you search one item i'm just i'm searching this uh, i'm searching this mouse okay i'm searching this mouse when i'm searching this mouse in the amazon uh, they are showing one brand, second brand, third, and just I close the window. And when next time I'm shopping there again, giving me the suggestions based on the past data. Past data means I was searching. So in this way, they are continuously working. And same is the Facebook also. Facebook is also storing our data. When you search something, another time giving the suggestion that follow this page, follow that page. This is what they're storing our data. And in the lots of, uh, I mean, apps are there in our mobile phones. They're also storing our data. And uh, then they are using that data, given us recommendations. 
I mean, this this is this is the process how this artificial intelligence is working. Uh, so this is the sum of the applications in education. When I'm talking about education part, because uh, we are now uh, we are concerned with. Uh, I mean, in today's uh, session is basically for how we can use in the teaching learning process. So um, application is that uh, we can use it in developing the content, smart content, data accumulation. Uh, personalized learning, adaptive learning, proctoring system is there, chatbots are going to be the new feature. And of course, uh, uh, somewhere uh, teachers have developed this also. Chatbots, chat compass, I mean, virtual facilitator, your AI, your assistant actually. Uh, this, is, uh, this is how AI is assisting you. Uh, we, we all need assistant, okay? And how does it mind if we got an assistant which is actually very efficient, uh, there are no, I mean, uh, you do not have to pay any salary to uh, your assistant and always there to work uh, and also there to willingly to work with the efficiency. This is what AI is. AI will provide you this assistant today that you can use in your teaching learning process to improve the efficiency. free assistant and it will be a workable assistant, efficient assistant, no salary, improve your teaching learning process. Uh, so moving further, these are some of the common everyday applications because it will help you to understand the concept of artificial intelligence. I mean, face tapping, face recognition, gesture recognition. You are using it in your mobile phones. I think uh, most of you will be recognizing as a lock locking for screen. Uh, this is the virtual reality. I mean, uh, text or audio recognition. Uh, AI also work on the natural language processing also. I mean, they recognize your speech and your text. And on the basis of that, create the patterns and you can create, you can translate your speech into the text with the help of AI. This is a very good feature. I mean, uh, for advertisement, yes, artificial intelligence is doing I mean, wonders, I can say on the social media, big data, I'm already uh, discussed with you, Amazon and Netflix. Uh, then uh, medical, in the medical sector, telemedicine, telemedicine and uh, various instruments also. Uh, then for weather predictions, and there are so, so many examples, endless examples of artificial intelligence, personalized learning, smart car, Tesla car, you have heard about it. Uh, Alan, Alan has uh, given a, a company of CEO, they have designed this car, car uh, basically a self-driving car using AI. And uh, the social media, surveillance, agriculture, in every sector we are in healthcare, no sector is left behind. Uh, where AI has not entered chatbots. There are so many chatbots have been used. Uh, you, you have come across that uh, on the websites in the banking sector where uh, actually uh, the person is not available. Uh, the machine is doing conversations. I mean, you can easily there chat with the machine. They have put it the chatbox there. So they can, you can easily converse with that machine, your doubts. I mean, uh, so this kind of chatbots are given. And what was I was talking about, your AI-powered digital assistant. This is a very, very good, I mean, tool, uh, basically designed to help, I mean, uh, the teachers, the researchers. Uh, this is very good, utter.ai. Uh, utter.ai, just go to your browser and type utter.ai. This is AI-powered machine, AI-powered digital assistant. This will help you to, and work to record your meetings, to record your lessons, videos, anything you can record and record and then side by side you can convert to text. This is a very good tool. I mean, uh, utter.ai. Uh, uh, if, if time permits, I will definitely show you uh, how it works. It's a very simple. You just type in your browser and you can easily use. There is, there is not difficult interface. So this is one assistant I have provided you. Uh, you can uh, 6,000 meetings up to 6,000 minutes, it's free. You can easily convert, record your, I mean, lectures, meetings, and then you can convert into text also side by side. You are taking notes also. I think this is the, a very good application of, uh, this is the tool which is given to us by artificial intelligence. And uh, this virtual reality and augmented reality technology is growing in every sector. I have already told you healthcare, gaming, internet, gaming, Pokemon Go. Uh, so there are so many games. I mean, the 2D, 3D games, which we, uh, maybe you all have played. Uh, this is actually drastically revolutionizing the sector. Uh, and of course, uh, one thing I want to discuss with you is that 
only 22% of all professionals are women. I mean, this is a hard fact to digest, but this is this is true. This is given, uh, I mean, by UNESCO and Roundtable uh, in their ethics that only 22% of AI are the professionals. So we need to work more. So how to bring, I mean, this fill this gender gap also. Uh, the one thing is that what they have given the recommendations that if the one thing is that the, I mean just I'm taking two three uh, because uh, I have the all the uh, part. So uh, one thing is that we have to fill this gender gap, and the second is that there is a no law on AI. I mean, is it ethical? Uh, uh, that is your data, your personal data has been preserved. I mean, in 2019, the bill was passed, but uh, not. it is not legal. It is not made an act. It was just passed in the Lok Sabha. Uh, uh, maybe uh, in future, we are, we are just making this a law illegal in India also, but in various countries around the, across the globe. Uh, this is one consideration. This is a very, I mean, uh, uh, matter of concern that there should be a law for AI. I mean, it should be ethical. And of course, when we come, when we talk about digital revolutions, we, we need to be very inclusive so that we can easily cover each and every individual, each and every sector. No sector should be left behind. Uh, now I'm coming to my new concept that is of augmented reality. Uh, augmented reality is basically uh, superimposing our digital reality with the physical world, I mean, real world, we are just superimposing it. Uh, I'm just uh, putting, it's a new technology. We are just overlaying the digital with the physical, with the real world. I will show you how this happens. Uh, basically, there are seven benefits of this augmented reality. Uh, the student engagement, the interest, uh, how to create, how to arouse the curiosity, understanding, how to work in the collaboration. I mean, cost effective also because uh, uh, some tools are free, some are paid, uh, but, but this is going to be really very good. I mean, to experience the reality. This, this is very important. Argumented reality helps us, I mean, to make 3D models, to make three-dimensional models. This, this is actually a very, very good, I mean, uh, the... Uh, this is the example of augmented reality. I will show you. This is one tool, Adobe Arrow, available in your mobile phones also, desktop also, window also to create augmented reality tools, videos for students, for I mean higher education, for school education. Both we can use a very good tool, a very simple tool to create 3D modeling, to create a three dimensional models. I mean, how to impose, how to superimpose. I mean, for example, this is my laptop, okay? I just want to superimpose this image of mobile phone. I mean, I can use this, uh, I can interact with this uh, reality. Uh, I mean, this is what the augmented reality is. We are interacting, we are superimposing our physical with the real world, actually. I, I will show you a small example, which I have just because uh, in a very small amount of time I have made this. Uh, this is what the Adobe Arrow is doing. Uh, I will show you one example. This was the, uh, I just do in uh, five, 10 minutes. I was trying actually yesterday. Uh, this is Adobe Arrow. I do just download in your mobile phone uh, or in any other. I mean, it's available Android, iOS devices, everywhere it's available, uh, even on the laptop. This is the, la this is the image. I mean, this is my laptop and this is the image of flower. I mean, uh, I just superimpose this flower on this laptop and I can even interact and touch that virtual reality. This is what the augmented reality is. I will show you in my, uh, I have just a small video for you. Uh, you can easily look if it, uh, I mean, opens, yes. You can easily look into this video, how I have created. I can spin, I can animate also, I can trigger also. I mean, this is a small example. You can make such 3D models for your students also. I mean, so that they can easily interact with, I mean, how uh, they can touch the reality. And this, this is a small example I have made to you for you because uh, there was, uh, I mean, paucity of time what made it at my end also. Uh, this, this is just how I have made. I have just superimposed these flowers on my laptop, on the surface of the, my laptop. And it can spin around, you can animate it. Uh, you can, uh, I mean, do other features also available depending upon your need. So this is, I think, very good uh, for, uh, and when it comes to augmented reality, 
uh, people people are they are using such i mean you can use it very easy to make in your classrooms for stu uh, teaching the students the various concepts i mean in this in this way you can use it this is actually uh, what augmented reality i'm giving you so many examples so that it, the concept is easily understood this is skeleton okay i mean uh, you can anything you can take it on your screen you can so, so that the students can interact with the live actually uh, the, the, yes, there are so many things which we can do uh, uh, in chemistry there are uh, three dimensional models you can make because i'm because i'm from basically science field so i've explored so much things in this uh, you can easily look into this picture what i have done i have superimposed this building on my lap on my phone actually this is what ai is we are just interacting with uh, I mean, we are just uh, our virtual reality and, of course, a real world, digital reality plus our real world. We are we are just interacting with both. You can easily look on this picture. This is very simple. Uh, there are so many applications available in our mobile phones uh, for desktop also. Uh, we can easily use them to develop such models for our students so that we can teach the concepts. Clear. Dr. Anuradha. Dr. Yes, Anuradha, sorry to interrupt. Is it possible to show virtually that how to use this, if possible? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's it's a very uh, easy. Uh, just I give one example. It will be fruitful for the participants. They are eagerly waiting. Yes, yes, sure, ma'am. possible, this kindly is, show. Yes, this is uh, the, the one example uh, I have shown. Uh, that is, I have used Adobe Arrow in my phone. Uh, I have just downloaded the application of Adobe Arrow. And then I just uh, uh, entered into this uh, uh, interface and then I just make, uh, I have showed you a small video that you can easily uh, create actually. Uh, how to create this, uh, I mean, reality Adobe Arrow. You have to download in your mobile phones, first of all, and then uh, you can just use it. Uh, how to superimpose the one image on another image. Uh, th these are another softwares also, which we can, we can use it. Uh, as Adobe, these are also free softwares. I mean, uh, some uh, up to some version it is uh, free, and then uh, we have some paid. But these are very, very easily. Uh, apart from these softwares, there are also another softwares, AR Loop. There is another applications which you can easily use in your in your mobile phones, uh, which which can be easily looked and can be uh, can be made in a very small uh, amount of time. Uh, you can use it. Uh, and of course, uh, when it comes to uh, argumented reality, one very important application which I am going to share with you is the Quillbot. Quillbot is a very good, I mean, it's a, uh, I mean, your assistant, virtual assistant for writing, actually. Uh, it's a tool uh, by powered by AI. Uh, it's a very good for paraphrasing because researcher, teacher, research scholar, everybody is now facing this issue of how to write the content. And of course, one thing is grammarly. I mean, it's a very, very good tool, uh, which can be used powered by the AI. Uh, this actually works on the system. Uh, because some, up to some, uh, I mean, features are free, then we have to purchase the premium version of both the tools. They are, uh, they are very good tools for writing. It's a good tool for paraphrasing because sometimes we have to, uh, because there is a lot of copyrighted content and we can't use, we have to change the language. And sometimes we are good at English, we are not good at English. So you can use these kind of Quilpo and Grammarly. These both are tools. I, I will show you, I mean, how they work actually. Uh, There's some open source also, free and open source. Uh, uh, good, not, uh, yes. Good uh, softwares. Yes, there are, there are, these are uh, free and open source also. Uh, the one I have, uh, the, the one I have already, uh, ma'am, told you uh, that, uh, that was actually the free software uh, because uh, up to some, uh, there is a limit because uh, 6,000 I mean, minutes, it's, it's a free. And then, uh, then they have to purchase the premium softwares. But I think uh, it's a more than sufficient they are providing us. And of course, for Grammarly and for Quillbot, they, they are up to some characters, it is free. And then uh, then we have to purchase something. Uh, I mean, if, if you're going to, uh, I mean, further steps, then uh, you have to purchase it. Uh, but uh, but the, these are very good softwares. I mean, uh, for even for plagiarism, Grammarly can be used for even for plagiarism also. Uh, once uh, you can uh, purchase it, 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 is, it is very, I mean, uh, it can be used. 
uh, not only to paraphrase, but it can also be used, uh, I mean, to, uh, to check how much extent of uh, your uh, content is plagiarized. I mean, it's, it's a good pledge checker also with your report and with underlining all the sentences, with given the resources also, the sources of the websites even. Uh, the, the, these are these tools actually uh, the, the, these tools are helping us I mean to improve the efficiency but of course uh, you can you should use with uh, care also precautions also because each and every time when we are using such tools uh, we should not develop the habit otherwise it will also diminish our creativity it should be used because whenever uh, you you have less time and uh, you want some suggestions some recommendations only then because uh, in the because uh, in the meantime we have to think the thought process should not be stopped that is why i'm saying that use these tools with the care uh, when it comes to augmented reality there are so many challenges there are so many pitfalls related to this because uh, being teachers being individuals a lot of training is required we need to be a lot of challenges uh, related to equipment tools these are not available and of course because there are so many uh, uh, digital divide is there, resources are not available. I mean, environment uh, is not available. Uh, Adobe Arrow is available in the Play Store. Go, just go to uh, your iOS or I mean, in, it, it should be, uh, I hope you have, uh, I mean, updated your softwares of mobile phones, the updated versions. Uh, I have tried in my phone uh, because it's an iOS and it's available in Android also. You just check it out. Otherwise, you can go for AR Loop. This is a good application to create. This is, this is a very good application to create augmented reality. Uh, so uh, now moving further, uh, the next concept I want to discuss with you is design thinking. Uh, design thinking is a lessons, uh, I mean, for classrooms. It's a very, very good innovation. Uh, we all have come across, uh, I mean, uh, various uh, using applications like uh, we have uh, the, the Amazon, Zomato, Swiggy, Uber Eats. I mean, they have all built their platforms, they all markets, they come on design thinking. This is a very good example. Design thinking is basically uh, used, I mean, to, uh, to satisfy the needs of customers in a more humanistic way, to, to I mean, satisfy the needs, uh, I mean, to draw and to empathize with the uh, with the uh, customers, with the individuals, with the human beings. Uh, this, this is a very, very good, uh, I mean, uh, methodology, which because we are more considered now concerned with the classroom. So I'm, I'm just discussing this with the new people that how uh, we can uh, use this uh, design thinking in our classrooms. Uh, this is very, very good, uh, I mean, uh, uh, strategy also, I mean, technique also. It's basically the process for creating a problem solving in a very innovative way. I mean, it's it's a it's a strategy which is, which is designed at the very core. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a human center. It's it's basically used to solve the problems of the human beings, and in a very creative way. This is uh, I mean, design thinking when it comes to. Uh, there are five steps actually. Uh, the first is that you have to identify the opportunity and you have to design the process. I mean, identify the opportunity, you have to define the problem. You have to empathize first. You have to look where, where lies the problem. You have to find, I mean, uh, which is the problem concerned with the human beings. Uh, not human beings, I mean, uh, any problem can be there. Then the second process is you have to, uh, I mean, design, you have to define it. You have to, uh, the, the, uh, how to go by it. I mean, you have to just plan it. Uh, and then we, we are going for ideate. Ideate means ideas. We have to think, I mean, what can the ideas we put it on? How can we use it, uh, those ideas? And then uh, we are going from pro prototype phase. Uh, in this phase, uh, we, we, what the ideas we have just accumulated in our mind, we are using those uh, ideas uh, just to uh, figure it out whether it works or not. We are just using it in the prototype fashion. I mean, then we are uh, once we we think that it will work then we go for testing in the field like we are doing uh, pilot testings and then we go to actually we go to the field to test our ideas and then that after testing you can easily 
uh, know the output. I mean, uh, this, this actually this process is designed because of uh, to improve, I mean, uh, the output actually. Uh, and because uh, this process basically designed uh, for the satisfaction of the human beings, for the customers, actually now, because uh, when we deal with the students, we can solve their problems using this design thinking in our uh, classrooms. Uh, these, these are all the apps uh, I have listed down, uh, augmented reality apps for science uh, students, for maths, for, I mean, uh, for because of the uh, school in schools, the Quiver app, very, very good app for painting, for creativity, for drawing, for students. I mean, there are so many apps. Google, Google Docs. It's a free, free to convert text to speech. I mean, you suppose you don't have any time, okay? Uh, then what you can do, a voice typing feature is there. Google Docs, voice typing feature is there, powered by AI, free tool. We all know that Google, we are using Google tools up to 15 GB drive, it's free, and it's, and it's a more than sufficient to do our work. You can voice type, you can convert into the text. Suppose I don't have any time, I, I have to just, uh, 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 I mean, create uh, content. So what we are, what I'm doing is that, I will just open my Google Doc, and then just, I will voice, I will just speak, and Google will write, okay? This is the free tool Google in Google Docs. It's the feature of AI, I mean, basically. And then Google Translate. Google Translator also works on our speech, on our speech recognition. That uh, And also, uh, you just put it any of the language you want to translate. Uh, it, it uh, I mean, it easily gives us side by side the output. So it's a very, very, I mean, most of you may be using this uh, Google Translator and Google Docs also. Uh, what I'm saying that knowing and unknowingly, we are using these things in our life, right? So uh, this is this is the actually uh, what the virtual reality I want to talk with you. Uh, virtual reality is basically, I mean, it's a creation of reality in a simulated way, in a simulated environment. And just uh, you you are using the computer technology to create simulated environments. Suppose I want you people to take a tour with me. Uh, I mean, because uh, due to this pandemic, it is not possible for us to uh, to go to uh, I mean uh, to a spot, to a picnic spot, or to any tourism or any uh, museums due to this pandemic. But I can go. Uh, we can go virtually. We can go virtually, and we can go to a place uh, where you can experience with your hands the virtual reality. We can go to so many places. Uh, where you can experience the virtual reality. I mean, the use of computer technology to create the simulated. And I have listed down the tools also. Uh, these, these are the tools. These, these are tools which you can use it. Uh, to, I mean, to uh, create the virtual realities, to experience the virtual realities. Uh, these are already there. Google Earth, Google Arts and Culture, Google Maps also. Uh, dear pod also the, these are the google uh, i mean the the these are the tools provided by these are free of cost actually they are free of cost and this is a very good tool for uh, students and teachers uh, to use this uh, i mean uh, how to uh, experience the virtual reality in the classrooms and one thing uh, the major thing i want to i mean share with you is which is missing in our classrooms, whether it is digital, whether it is uh, I mean, physical, any, any of the teaching, experiential learning. And the, uh, most of the teachers, they are concerned about this experiential learning. And for experiential learning, we have to uh, I mean, use uh, various uh, tools, various digital tools to bring, I mean, to improve, uh, to bring the changes uh, in this teaching learning process, to improve it, to bring, uh, I mean, improve the learning outcomes, uh, to, uh, to improve the achievement retention also in the learning world. So this is very important. And for experiential learning, I must say that virtual reality is a very good pedagogical tool, which we can use it. Uh, and then uh, I must share with you what experiential learning is, because some of you may be not be aware of this experiential learning. Experiential learning is nothing. What we experience basically, what then you learn by doing something, uh, actually doing something, and the experience, and what the experience you got is what you learned. And uh, the key to involvement is basically 
uh, the experience and we are we are using the knowledge which is created by the experience is never profitable do you all agree with me this uh, david cobb has given a theory of experiential learning i thought which is very relevant in today's when we talk about this digital classrooms uh, and of course, one model which I want you people to use in classroom is also VARC model, which is a very good model. Uh, so we are in the group. Suppose we have 85 participants now. Uh, we all have different styles of learning, right? We have four different styles given by the VARC. Visual, auditory, reading, kinesthetic. In our classrooms also, there are different types of learners. There are different, different types of learners. And depending upon the learning style, we should use the teaching strategy. This is this is, I mean, this is one tip from my side that some students learn from visual, some from I mean, uh, some they learn by hearing, I mean, from speech, and other from reading. And this uh, sometimes we require kinesthetic, I mean, hands-on physical I mean, activities, psychomotor activities. Uh, but one thing it's very uh, I mean want to share with that we are all the combination. I mean, people are real. They are some some learn actually typically for physical one mode also, but mostly majority normality normal population. We are the combination of all. So uh, this is this is uh, this is a very very important model. I want to share that depending upon um, the type of learner, we should use uh, the strategy. Uh, so uh, moving further, this is one another innovation given by the Bloom's digital taxonomy. This is this is a very good innovation which we can use in our digital classrooms from moving from lower order thinking skills to higher order thinking skills. What we are doing now in our classrooms, we are just focusing on the lower order thinking skills. And this is, this is very important, I mean, to mention here that we are, we are just lying on the first two, remembering and understanding. We are failed to move to the higher order thinking skills. This is the irony of, this is the I mean, reality of the classrooms. Last, that is creating part, creation part is missing from our classrooms. Bloom has beautifully given us this, I mean, taxonomy uh, given, moving from, this is the for the cognitive, I mean, domain. We have uh, this hierarchy of thinking skills moving from lower to higher. Uh, so this is very, I have just, uh, I mean, mentioned the activities which we can do side by side. You How, to, how you can use these activities uh, while uh, going, using this Bloom's taxonomy, I mean, uh, remembering part, you, when you are just searching the Google, this is only the remembering part. Understanding, I mean, you are just uh, tagging, you are subscribing, tweeting. Uh, uh, applying part is when you are calculating, you are analyzing, you are editing. For analyzing part, for mind mapping, I mean, sometimes we, we are just uh, using various uh, ideas to collaborate, to arrange those ideas and then evaluating, I mean, grading the testing. And last part that is creating creation of something new you have published your paper, blog, something like, like a document you have created. For example, it's a creation part and which is, which is, which is missing in our classrooms. So we have to take care. And one important thing uh, I wish to, I mean, uh, discuss with you uh, in detail is the attention management. Attention management is the new aspect, new innovation of 21st century. I mean, how to sustain the attention of students. It, it will be really a challenge when they return back from pandemic in the physical classrooms also. Uh, of course, in digital, we have uh, this, this challenge. Attention management is very, very difficult task, but uh, how to, I mean, prepare the students to manage their attention without any distraction this is this is this is a very important issue which has been raised through the research also uh, and i was also talking about this is one of the skill also uh, which global economic forum world economic forum has been talking about that how to help the young people to use the information technology more responsibly uh, i mean uh, you you all agree with me this with the fact that uh, the students, they, they, are, they are just facing the difficulty of maintaining their trust in the digital classrooms. Uh, and this is, this is a very, very, very difficult part uh, which students are facing. I and mean, how to get their attention, how to keep their attention. Uh, we have to do so many activities in our classrooms like class discussion, interactive opportunities with the help of tools I have shared with you. And of course, uh, to manage these classrooms, these classrooms and getting the attention is a very, very important. I mean, 
uh, how we can use this uh, I mean, uh, digital tools to, uh, to sustain their uh, interest, to sustain their attention. Uh, first of all, you just, uh, when, when you turn to your physical classroom, you have to just, uh, I mean, uh, if they have their mobile phones, then you have to make them just turn off, give some rewards. I think it should be intrinsic, motivational rewards. I mean, uh, when you are reducing the teacher directed learning and increasing the student directed learning, automatically the, the shift will take place. Uh, then uh, this is not, uh, I mean, this is not a, a one time phenomena. We have to learn day by day how to, I mean, change uh, this problem of uh, sustaining attention uh, to I mean, uh, alertness, to concentration, to more uh, the, the motivation, more, I mean, uh, so that interest can be aroused in the students. Uh, because you can easily, uh, I mean, even we, why we are going uh, to on the students on this part also, being teachers, being any individual, you can easily look at the notifications, 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 whether it's mobile, if it's laptop, it's desktop. This, these are these are always there for us, whether it is email. All of the day we are we are have to come across this, and this is going on. Uh, in this uh, 21st century classrooms, in education basically, in this uh, when we are talking about this era of new innovations, uh, especially after this pandemic, we are focusing on how to train the teachers. We are focusing on how to I mean. Uh, I mean sustain the interest of the students just by motivating the teachers I and mean, to use the new technology for new innovations. Teacher training is important. At the same time, learner training is very important, how to train the learners. I think this is missing uh, from, uh, from the, uh, our present system of education. But uh, we, we always think that uh, when we do, do train the teachers, then automatically students will be trained. No, this, this will not happen automatically. We have to train the learners also, especially when it comes to technology, uh, when it comes to ICT. Uh, there, there are a lot of, because we are on the same platform. Even I think students are nowadays more advanced than the teachers. This, this is the phenomena. I mean, this is the present phenomena. And uh, we, 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 you all agree on the, uh, this fact that students, they're expecting more from the teachers. And one thing I want to discuss with you is that whenever you are evaluating, you are going for assessment, always remember that you set the test for your students, what you really evaluating is the effectiveness of your teach. It's not you are just, I mean, giving you them marks, grades to memorize the facts. No, when it comes to, uh, I mean, uh, assessment part, always think that you are going to assess how effective your teaching is. This is, this is very important because uh, sometimes we have to, we are more focusing on to give them marks, which question is correct, which is not. And we just forget this thing that uh, actually we are assessing how successful we are in bringing the improved learning out. And I think these are the six years I have listed down that why we are failing. We are just completely failing at the digital development interventions. Uh, because sometimes, sometimes there is a lack of research is there. And uh, of course, there is a much increased emphasis on the innovation and people uh, actually don't know how to use that innovation in a productive manner actually. and of course self-management self-management we all have experienced during this pandemic that how our work-life balance was this point we do not know how to manage with ourselves this is the, this is the biggest problem which we are which all we are focusing and you all agree with me that uh, and of course the, due to this commercialization uh, of education business markets uh, somewhere we have lost the quality also. But of course, uh, the, the day is not far that uh, the new uh, technological innovations, pedagogical innovations are emerging day by day, but it will take the time. But of course, we need a dialogue between the intergenerations because uh, you, you all agree that if, if we have one, uh, I mean, old person in the family or uh, anywhere at the workplace, we think that uh, he or she do not know technology. She will not help us. We have no experience actually. But this is not the case. Every person, every generation, they have their own experiences. They have their own thoughts to, uh, I mean, to provide us 
knowledge to be to help us in one or another way i mean this is the complete i mean uh, i must uh, share with you that uh, sometimes we think that uh, the older generation people are not help us when we comes to technology part of course at that time it was not available so uh, they did not i mean there was not much exposure but now there is exposure but there are so many experiences so many i mean difficulties they can uh, they can share with us i mean they can also uh, give us recommendations uh, i'm just highlighting that in because uh, this this is a lot of generation gap is day by day it is emerging and we have to uh, bridge this gap of inter generation this is very important uh, i mean one thing i want to discuss with you is that uh, just you just forget uh, what the digital is or what the not digital is you have to just make your higher education as good as it can be uh, because uh, the, the idea is to uh, i mean uh, the, the aim the objective of education we have to uh, train the students uh, to be a thinkers to be a good human being first of all this is this should be the i mean the basic objective and of course when it comes to principles for better online learning uh, the one thing is that good teachers introduce new thoughts but the great teachers always introduce them how to think actually in in what manner we, we should think this this is the very important camera online platforms mics devices all these will not make you a good teacher proper instructional training a knowledge of pedagogical principles a sound integration of technology with pedagogy that is that is very much essential uh, when it comes to uh, learning uh, deep deeper learning and we it should be more durable it should be effortful and of course we we, we all will agree that the learning which is uh, when you do efforts uh, you always enjoy it and it is unforgettable this this is the i mean beauty of uh, when you put efforts beauty of learning actually uh, and one thing i want to share with you that uh, this is about uh, i can also give you uh, i mean it's a strategy technique or the tip anything you can uh, consider it uh, the one thing is that uh, when you want to enhance the learning process in online education digital education one thing always remember social presence is very very important nothing can do artificial intelligence nothing can do augmented reality virtual reality the only thing which can do is social presence your presence being the teacher this this is this is very very important and i, I must uh, tell you various instances are there where students are uh, they share this kind of things that uh, you, uh, during this pandemic and of course uh, when they return to their classes and all this they they miss actually the interaction this this is the basically a very i mean hampering their social development social presence which that every teacher every student every human being has missed but now we have realized that uh, whether you know technology or not whether you know pedagogy or not how to integrate anything you don't know but you simply use your voice use your presence it will do wonders it will it will automatically improve the process actually it will improve your relationships social presence is the one way to express your emotions feelings and because we are we are, when we talk about digital innovations how to apply the digital innovations these things have to be taken into the mind it should be a uh, consider it a very important not from my side it is from all over across the world the teachers the researchers the professors the i mean everybody is looking for the ways to improve this digital education and that is why uh, the innovations when they bring out the fruitful results uh, they bring out only when when we are using in such a productive manner otherwise uh, it will be just throwing the technology in the classrooms so it's it's important to i mean i'm just underlining that Uh, to how to interact with the students and how to enhance their learning this is very very important skill based training is important i uh, you all will agree with me on this fact but the one thing i have all uh, i have always advocating one thing is that we we need both this both the i mean technology with the sound pedagogy 
uh, of course, we, we, when you provide knowledge to your students, uh, nowadays, if you only provide knowledge and they do not know how to apply that knowledge, uh, that is, that is, that will not, I mean, bring the, the bring the, if, uh, the, 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 the results which we, we uh, by the objective we are using. I mean, we are just, then if you're providing knowledge, we are not trying real world applications uh, where they can apply the knowledge. The first question of the student is that, why would I learn this subject, this I mean, this content, what is the use if, if, the, if it remains, remains in the books? The, the, the totally the, the, the 21st century learners are very, very, I mean, they are very smart learners. And they always ask that where you are going to apply your knowledge. So this, is, this is very important, I mean, question also for you. This is also a digital innovation nowadays of open pedagogy, open pedagogy, uh, I mean, the sources, practices, softwares, uh, I mean, the, the, the access, uh, as ma'am was also asking about one of the tools, uh, this, is, this is the new culture which has been added. The, the resources were there all across all the world, the various universities, Stanford, MIT's, Harvard University, they have their big reservoirs. And we have very much I mean, known to you with open educational resources, but the thing is that, where are they located and how to use it? This is the, I mean, this is uh, the major uh, the question that is all from in front of all of us. These are some of the OER repositories. Uh, Murnot is there, uh, Galileo is there, OpenStax, Book, uh, OER Commons. I have listed down, these are all free resources. Uh, I've just listed down a few. There are so many sources of open educational resources. Our Indian resources are there. Uh, where you can use these resources uh, to develop, because uh, we all agree with us, we don't have so much time to develop the e-content, but we can use the e-content. These are the, some of the digital initiatives of Government of India that is uh, developed by the Indian government at Swayam, Swayam Prabha, Diksha, NROER, uh, Manudarpan, Pragyata guidelines, I mean, ICT curricula. These are all, these are so many resources, virtual labs, I mean, these are the resources which we can be easily, easily used uh, by the teachers because they are, the content is already there. It's uh, you have to just uh, I mean look at which which uh, on which subject you need, and you can easily integrate in your uh, um, teaching and learning. But this another technology, another innovation is simulation. This is nowadays a very buzzword: simulation, simulations, classroom simulators. These these uh, these uh, these can be used. I mean, to improve, uh, especially when it comes to online teaching, that's a very good tool I have listed that is FET interactive simulations. Uh, sometimes what happens is that you don't, uh, you want your students to experience the reality in the same way. Uh, I mean, like a real, like a real, we are just simulating. Uh, uh, if there might be some from the education background, I mean, teacher, a teacher educator, that we, we are, all that we are doing in the practice of simulated teaching. Why do we do simulated teaching? We, we just, uh, we do simulate teaching, I mean, to train the teachers that how when they actually go to the schools, actually go to the colleges, actually go to the, I mean, uh, their field, how, how they can tackle the students. I mean, when they do simulated teaching, they, they exactly know, they know how to, I mean, train their students. I mean, use various methods of pedagogy to use in, use in their subjects. We used to do the simulated teaching. And, but now uh, that was, I mean, uh, 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 that was very old in the curriculum also. But nowadays the technology has emerged, simulated technology, classroom simulators. These simulations are available. You can easily use in your classrooms uh, that is, uh, I have one listed that is FET simulations. I mean, very, very uh, good simulations, which is, which is available. Actually, sometimes what happens that you want your students uh, uh, to see virtually the experiment, but it, it was not available at that time. But now we have a very good and uh, reservoir, uh, which you can, uh, you can use it. Online games are there. Uh, you can easily look upon that. Uh, the, the, Actually, these simulations are helping us, uh, I mean, to use it uh, in, in one way or another way. I mean, they, they, they just help us. There are so many, um, I mean, technology is there, which we can integrate in uh, because uh, for, you can easily look uh, at my screen. Uh, this is one example I'm going, this is pet simulation. Suppose uh, we all know that the pH of, I mean, pH of the blood, the buffer solutions, I mean, it changes when, 
uh, when we are using another uh, alias, when I'm adding some of the buffer solution, the pH is going to change. Uh, so this is this is basically, I mean, they have given us experiment, uh, virtual experiment, virtual simulation. See how beautiful it is. Uh, you can demonstrate to your students uh, like this. I'm just adding water. You can easily, the people from science background can understand. I'm just water, adding water, okay? The pH is seven. We all know that water is neutral, right? I'm adding blood, okay? The pH is changing. I'm adding just from here, you can add water also. So in this way, there are so many experiments given. These are the simulations basically. They have created the experiment for us. On online, nothing, you have to go on the website. You can select your, uh, I mean, any of the experiment you can, you can go on that. The pH is changing. I mean, these kinds of simulations are there on the web, on the internet. Uh, there are so many other sources. It's a free, of course. It's a totally free. You can easily use it. Uh, moving further, uh, next I want to share with you is pedagogy of happiness. This is a very, uh, I mean, a good uh, pedagogy which is evolving. And you see uh, many countries where this is the new area of research. And it's, I'm, I'm not, it's a, I must say that it's not new area. It's, uh, if the time has arrived, we should use these kinds of factors of happiness in the classroom, because this is very, very, very important. Uh, we all know that during this pandemic, during the pandemic, even before the pandemic, students, they come across mental health issues. A lot of mental health issues are there. Uh, to tackle those issues, we need strategies. To understand those issues, to solve their problems. So uh, this, this is that teacher now needs to be, I mean, uh, uh, it, should, it should work in such a manner that they should understand empathy. We need to understand the problem, the feelings of the others. This is very, not only in classrooms, everywhere, everywhere we, we, we want to understand. Pedagogy of kindness. This is another innovation. I mean, we should be, we should not forget technology will not work. Technology will not work. Surely it will not work. Uh, we, we, we need some well-being pedagogy, happiness. I mean, these are the new pedagogies which, uh, I mean, uh, people are using all where, all where, and students are expected us to use this kind of technology. And World Bank has listed, uh, I mean, three basic skills, which, which are, uh, I mean, these are the needed for economies. Uh, to, to emerge new with the uh, I mean, new labor force, new workforce, that is cognitive, social, behavioral, and technical. I think this is this is a much relevant now also, that we, we all need to work on us also. Uh, uh, and one thing is that when it comes to student engagements, uh, student engagement, we can easily uh, improve it only when we involve them, uh, I think, through research and through inquiry, only, only, uh, we can uh, engage the students by using because uh, some people uh, agree with me that teaching and research they are the basically two separate things. No, they are not, and they they are actually interlinked with one another. And uh, when it comes to uh, research part, it's laborious part. You all agree, but if you do not research, I mean, which method is not working? Which is which is I mean, where where is the problem lies? Where this can only be done through research, and this is, I think, the problem. And but now, uh, now when we're moving towards, the, we are using the innovations. It is very important to continuously research. I mean, uh, and also to publish your research. Also, this is this is very very important uh, when it when we talk about students. This is not about for the college teacher for the higher education, but for the school also. Uh, action research. This is very important technique which can be used by the teachers to solve their problems. I mean, uh, some sometimes uh, you are using online platforms and you know that this method is not working. Then why it is not working? You have to do action research. You have to I mean find out what is the reason. In the similar way that we do the research, the similar way we do action research. The thing is that in action research, when we uh, when we configure that, when we find out where problem lies, we take immediate action. And this is a cyclic process. And then this, it goes on, goes on. Then we find another problem, another action, another problem, another action. And in this way, uh, it goes on. This is very important tool for school teachers, for higher education teachers. Also, for everybody, you can use it for to improve the student engagement. Uh, research skill is very, very, very important for learner, for teachers. I'm highlighting because, the, because there, there is a lot of, uh, I mean, 
uh, dearth of uh, these skills in our classrooms uh, because we, uh, due to some curriculum or work overload we we, uh, we just uh, don't have any time we are in so much hurry uh, that we we often sometimes uh, ignore or neglect these kind of skills one thing i want to discuss is that that challenges always keep us up. this is very important when it comes to innovation because uh, when it comes to uh, using the technology in the classrooms a lot of challenges as ma'am puna ma'am has already shared with me before starting the lecture that teachers uh, they, they they are facing a lot of problems and uh, and i agree with her and you all will agree with me that uh, of course there are challenges are there but uh, we we have to learn day by day where are the tools where uh, where are the resources because when it comes to technology we need to be resourceful uh, and uh, sometimes uh, of course i can understand on the uh, there are um, I mean, monetary issues are there uh, the funds are not available i mean everybody can purchase everything and we are looking for open source software and there are so many things which are available free open in the public domain actually which we can use it uh, and of course uh, when it if if anybody wants to purchase he, he or she if it lies in her budget i think uh, teachers must go for it but uh, of course first look for the um, free or uh, versions also because some uh, some uh, paid uh, i mean softwares are very very good but it depends upon uh, how much you can uh, i mean afford or you can use it but the thing that the things which are available which are an open source we can use them also we can take the help of those softwares open education resources uh, this is this is very uh, one thing i want to share with it and of course great things they they, they always come uh, from the comfort zones this is this is another i mean issue uh, which we all come across that uh, we have to do a lot of labor lot of hard work uh, when it come to classroom community our capacity to generate the excitement is deeply affected by the interest in one another why i am uh, raising this point that especially in the conversations if you uh, with the students i'm been pointing that with the students teacher and student conversations if you do not i mean uh, realize there are students that you are uh, interested in their conversation only then they will share their feelings their thoughts i mean once you you have built your rapport with your students that they will share always your problem with you uh, you have to show them that you are interested in hearing their voices you have as i have told you that you have to share the presence of one uh, and of course first thing is connect connect is very important curriculum pedagogy skills these are the secondary things first is connect connection is very important because when we are using technology we should take care of some precautions also this is very important some welcoming gestures should be there i mean uh, and it should the environment should be such that should be conventional to the students so that why they they, they automatically attend the classes there is no issue for that and of course classroom management is not about the rules it's it's just about the right relationships any technology will not work unless and until your relationships are not uh, right they are not i mean uh, you have not built a strong foundation on that uh, and of course one thing is that student student is more important than anything this i want to i mean highlight Uh, i want to share with you that student is the foremost student is more important than tool than technology than artificial intelligence everything is secondary first is the student remember always that everything will work if you if you fact and the one thing is that you have to find out the ways to connect ways to show your friends i mean if if you are willing a will to do is more than anything any tool any artificial intelligence any augmented reality i mean uh, uh, this is this is very very important because nowadays what is happening that uh, this connection part connection part is very very uh, i mean missing component when it comes to i mean this digital or physical even in the physical classrooms we come across so many cases in the classrooms while learners they are they are not not attending the classes properly i mean they they are not improving the learning outcomes there is a lot of i mean issues there that was addressed the stress is there mental health issues i mean these issues these these issues can be can be tackled only with the help of uh, i mean uh, it's only help of presence of the teacher no tool can bring 
uh, I mean, efficient productivity, or we can say improve your teaching learning process, unless and until uh, you are using uh, any of the technology, uh, but it should be integrated in such a manner that uh, the students which are in front of you should feel your presence, should, you should feel uh, that you are empathetically I mean, treating them, your, uh, the students in such a way, you are empathizing with your students. Uh, because there are a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, challenges, uh, of course, when it comes to uh, uh, technology is available, uh, advantages are there, benefits are there, but challenges on the same, on the same time are available. So, so this is, this is very important to highlight. I mean, uh, so thank you so much. This is all uh, from my side. I mean, uh, I'm just sharing a little bit views, uh, so that you you can easily use them afterwards. I mean, these these kind of uh, uh, technologies which I have shared with you. So many problem challenges are there, but of course it will it will work uh, after uh, some time. Day by day we are improving, and of course uh, this is a struggle which after two after I mean this is a long struggle of two years. Uh, the pandemic has thrown. Uh, I mean, it's a push. Uh, in other words, I mean, it's a positive opportunity. Also, we are using this uh, technology. There, we are using these kinds of the tools uh, which are available to us. Uh, so, this is from my side. And uh, if you want to share, you can anything, any suggestion, any question in the chat box, please. Thank you, uh, Dr. Anuradha Sethri ji. I think we all have got a lot of knowledge regarding artificial intelligence, and I personally uh, feel so much uh, enlightened by your lecture and all the participants. Thanks you once again. I think some of the queries have been raised in the chat box. Uh, please do have a look over them. And I urge uh, the participants to raise their queries if they do have any. If someone wants to ask something, then you can ask in any language, you can talk, you can ask your mic on and ask. There is a resource person available. Rashmi Bedi, your query is, she is asking, ma'am, Adobe Aero is not available in the Play Store. Kindly tell us from which website we can download. Adobe Aero is uh, available in, ma'am, in, uh, in for the Windows also, for uh, desktop also. Uh, maybe their phone, uh, they have not, I mean, updated the software of the version because I have downloaded uh, in my iOS phone, Adobe Aero is free of cost. You can download it on the desktop also. It's a free, it's free. कोई कुछ और पूछना चाहता है तो आप पूछ सकते हैं कि आप एआई को कैसे सिंपल जस्ट फॉर इनिशियली आप उसे कैसे यूज कर सकते हैं आपने देखा होगा कि आपके जो स्टूडेंट्स हैं वो आपसे ज्यादा स्मार्ट हैं और काफी हद तक सीरी कोटाना एलेक्सा इससे ही पूछते हैं और आजकल तो बच्चे कुछ भी टाइप भी करना नहीं चाहते सीधा वहीं से अमेज़न पे जाते हैं और वहीं से पूछते हैं और आपने देखा भी होगा कि जो आपके फोन्स हैं अगर आप पास में बैठे पिज़्ज़ा की बातें करते हैं तो फोन को खोलते ही ऐड आ जाती है जो मेटो से कि ये कॉम्बो ऑफर ट्रस्ट आ जाए अदरवाइज अटेंडेंस आगे आगे कम होने वाली है बच्चों को लगेगा कि नहीं हमें तो टीचर से ज्यादा आता है हालांकि आप सबको पता रहता है कि जो गूगल देवता है वो सिर्फ एक नॉलेज ही प्रोवाइड करता है उसकी एप्लीकेशन एक टीचर ही सिखाता है पर स्टूडेंट्स को ये समझने में टाइम लगेगा आपको कुछ ना कुछ इनोवेशन या नया कुछ तो सीखना ही पड़ेगा तो इसके लिए काइंडली आप अपने क्वेश्चन रेज कीजिए रिसोर्स पर्सन अवेलेबल है आप सबके लिए ही हमने ये ऑर्गेनाइज किया है in any language, I can, she can speak in, uh, Punjabi also. Yes, uh, sure, ma'am, sure. Punjabi, you can ask how you can ask. There is a question. Dr. Sekri? Am I audible? Yes, yes, audible, audible. Dr. Sekri, as uh, I have received the affiliation up to seniors can be level, even I am going to 
introduce artificial intelligence in my school. So uh, many of the students, those will come from such schools, right? Those uh, doesn't have such kind of knowledge about the AI. So how we can start initially this subject where we can just put up basic knowledge. And on the other side, even I want to do one thing in my school as we have taken it as a subject from CBSE, I want to start it with my middle classes, a basic knowledge to my middle classes separately. So I need some guidance uh, in this concern. Ma'am, uh, one thing is that you, uh, if you want to start it as a subject for your students, uh, one thing is you have to, first of all, you have to frame your curriculum also. Uh, we need experts, uh, we need a good experts on artificial intelligence. And of course, uh, because uh, when we, we start anything, when we start new courses in our schools or any institutions, the problem is that we have to figure it out, uh, whether we have resources, funds available, and of course, the one thing is that if, if it is, uh, suppose uh, we, we all agree with that, whatever we have, we have to make best out of it. Uh, because if we wait till we have resources, then time will go on. And of course, we have to, the, the, race, the, the race by which the technology is moving, there's a big race. And the, and the speed with which technology is, I mean, go, uh, moving is day by the speed of light, actually. So when we have to match with this, we have to, uh, yes, of course, we have to figure it out, uh, various, I mean, modalities, uh, that is separate part. But the thing is that, ma'am, you first of all, you have to uh, frame the curriculum also. And uh, because you have raised such issue, I want to share with one thing also, one issue, that I have uh, uh, made one course on artificial intelligence. Uh, I mean, I'm going to launch, launch this course in maybe in the month of uh, April or in the, uh, I mean, May, April or May. I'm just prepared, I have prepared that course. And uh, the, the thing, the same thing you were discussing that you want to launch it as a subject in your schools, we, we have to do some planning part, ma'am. And the planning part, we have to, a lot of things, I mean, because it is for the beginners especially, then we have to, a lot of things like what should be the curriculum, what should be the experts. And of course, you have to look uh, for various things like resources in your school also. I mean, it's a collaborative effort. Uh, you can take the uh, help of, uh, I mean, because nowadays, because online classes are there, so uh, it's, a, it's also, I mean, it's not a difficult thing uh, to start the, the, these kinds of courses and subjects in the, in the schools. And of course, one thing is that, ma'am, if you are planning to start this uh, course on artificial intelligence, uh, one thing you have to be very much careful with that, that is, uh, there should be a proper check on the students also. I mean, uh, the, the things that, that, that after doing, uh, after, I mean, uh, understanding these, uh, when it comes to application part, we have to train in such a manner, they should be very much precautionary mayors should be taught to them when you are, they are using technology. So, I mean, focus on both the parts of artificial intelligence and of course, on the precautions part, because there is no law, I mean, ethically, uh, uh, they are, they are, we are just on the process of framing the laws also. Uh, just try to provide them knowledge of technology. Because ma'am, this event comes to AI, it's, uh, I mean, it's a next level. Just, I think you should start from the basic level. First, give them some knowledge of ICT, if they have. But I'm just uh, giving my suggestion. Maybe I will be wrong or right. Uh, it's sort of depend upon you. Just start with the basic one, basic one for the beginners, and then move to AI. It will be easy them to understand. Of course, one my suggestion, if you want to incorporate that, try to incorporate a uh, pedagogy of happiness, happiness in the curriculum, happiness as a subject, which is very important to tackle the mental health issues. Because when you uh, teach them this AI, this artificial intelligence, this technology part, definitely, uh, by the time there will be an issues related to mental health stress also because a technology there will be a lot of exposure will be there and you can easily understand the adolescent issues adolescent problems so uh, we have to take everything we have to consider left also we have to consider right also when we start the new path should we start it from the practical first or the theory ma'am theory, the practical theory. practical both okay. Internet, ma'am. Uh, if okay. you only provide them a practical part, then they 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 will surely they you they can misuse. I mean, uh, somebody can abuse. Anything can happen, ma'am. We should give them knowledge because uh, this is a law of nature, ma'am. Theory and practical always go hand in hand. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, <laughs> because this is very important. 
yes yes ma'am this is important we because later or sooner we need to think yes yes ma'am later or sooner every institution has to work upon it yes thank you ma'am thanks for your suggestions any other uh, query from the participant uh, participants or we uh, proceed further okay now i formally invite our honorable principal dr neena seth pajni to present a vote of thanks dr neena seth pajni thank you thank you dr kopal kishan and i also here want to share that 2020 global teacher award was given to uh, indian school teacher uh, ranjit sin dizal and he uh, was uh, efficient enough to develop qr codes for the books and help the tribal girls and uh, to make up their attendance so attendance was high so he was awarded with uh, huge money as a global uh, in teacher award in 2020 only so we have to change to uh, and has to match with the technology so dr anuradha your uh, interactive and interesting uh, presentation i think uh, successfully elaborated about that why we should uh, change our style of teaching and i congratulate you for uh, this uh, prudent and uh, comprehensive deliberation on advanced digital innovation and artificial intelligence together uh, achieve more in 21st century i appreciate dr poonam sharma ji also for this great initiative to be part of this learning activity and thanks to all the participants from various schools and colleges to be part of this and dear dr anuradha gpc and sentinel international school are be holden and inducted for your kind as gesture for sparing time for this vibrant presentation thanks to all the participants hope you all had a fruitful session god bless you all thank you have a nice day thank you ma'am thanks a lot thank you so much ma'am neena ma'am for kind words and uh, thank you poonam ma'am for giving me a uh, platform i mean to share the views and of course it was very uh, i mean it's a pleasure to take the session and learned a lot ma'am enjoyed a lot thank you ma'am this is not the first session even we want many more sessions from yes, you yes 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 any time it will be followed anytime. by many more yes any time ma'am yes uh, one thing ma'am i want to share because uh, i feel so because ma'am i'm very i mean straight forward person uh, uh, because uh, when it comes to tools to operate the tools to operate the digital tools uh, we we uh, in such we i have actually trained the teachers to use how to use to, we have a separate hands on training workshops i mean uh, people were asking about how to use adobe aero or uh, go, uh, i mean otter.ai ai go uh, uh, i mean quillboard grammarly i mean these uh, i teach them i mean it's a, uh, a totally hands on training workshop ma'am uh, so uh, the, the, i wish i could help them because due to paucity of time also but uh, but i'm sure to help at any time thank it you will be, it will be pleasure to have you in future also and um, preferably in offline mode sure ma'am yes physically yes i i agree ma'am physical interaction is better than the online but of course this is also i mean because this is all, uh, due to this pandemic even this online opportunity is uh, better than anything um um uh, sushma kumari i think participant one of the participant is asking for the video of this the webinar so we will put this video on our youtube channel govindgar public college channel and we'll share the link in this or you may visit our channel after two or three days it will be there and you can watch it replay it thank you thank you to, have a nice thank you to all of you thank you have a nice day